Hello, this is a video about the games of the small states of Europe, which started 27th of May 2013. Well, Tsardo, you've never heard of them. So what are these games? To summarize it, they are like the Olympic games, but smaller. To find out more about these games, let's start at the end of their name and work our way back. Europe is a subcontinent of Eurasia, which is often seen as a full-fledged continent of its own because of historical and cultural borders between it and Asia. The thing is, nobody is really sure where those borders should be drawn. We could draw the line at the Caucasus mountain range and the Bosporus Strait. But then Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan might be left out. And what about Turkey? Are they European enough? And even Israel gets to compete in the yearly Eurovision Song Contest. This border gets vague, which will become important later on. Then we have the word state. Not state as in United States, but as in nation state. An independent country. But what is a country? Can you just plant a flag in your backyard? Stop paying taxes and claim you're now living in Aymedizupistan? Well, yes and no. You can do that. But the tax collectors will still come after you, and you won't be able to join the United Nations. What you've just started is a micronation, a small entity that thinks of itself as an independent country, but doesn't get taken seriously by anyone else, except perhaps other micronations. To become a true state, your country must be recognized by other official countries. There are two ways an existing state can recognize a country. Method one is simply stating you recognize them going out of your way to help a new country. The other way is to make any sort of official deal with a young nation. If you're willing to sign an armistice with them, to officially determine how your borders run or to supply their army, you admit in the process that you think of them as a true country. The true birth certificate of many nations is therefore not their declaration of independence, but a peace treaty with their former masters. But it's not enough to be recognized by just one country. You need to get more of them behind you. But you don't need all of them either. China, for instance, doesn't recognize Taiwan. And Taiwan doesn't recognize China. Still, both of them are real countries. Although Taiwan sometimes feels like they aren't. Because their actual wish is not to be recognized as Taiwan, but as the true China. It's unclear how many countries have to ignore you before you lose your status as an official nation state. But it's uncommon for countries to have more than a handful of such enemies. Another condition implied by the word state is that a country is fully independent and not a part of another bigger country. Now we arrive at the word small. When is a state small? This is usually determined by looking at the population. Now, let's say a standard country has between 10 million and 100 million inhabitants. This category includes countries like Germany, France and Great Britain, but also Portugal, Greece, Belgium and the Netherlands to name a few. An over average country would then be 100 million to 1 billion inhabitants. The only European country that big is Russia, but the category also includes nations like Japan, Mexico, Indonesia and the United States. The only large countries in the world using this scale are India and China, both with over a billion people living in them. But we weren't looking for large countries, so let's look at the other end of the scale. First we get to below average countries, with 1 to 10 million inhabitants. This is the category that houses the most countries worldwide, so I should actually call these average countries. But since that messes up my logic, I won't. Within Europe, the smallest country in this category is Estonia, while the largest is Hungary, coming in just below the 10 million mark. Other examples are the Scandinavian countries. All four of them are in this size range. A small country, according to the scale, would then be a country with between 100,000 and 1 million people. There are five of these within Europe. Luxembourg, Iceland, Malta, Montenegro and Cyprus. See where Cyprus is? Well, that's Europe's fake border in action. Another thing about Cyprus is that only about two thirds of the island Cyprus is part of the country Cyprus. The other part has declared independence, after a power struggle between Greece and Turkey over the island. But this northern Cyprus only got recognized by one country, Turkey, so it's not an official state, and it doesn't get to play with the others. Not that the two Cypresses would get along very well if it was an official state, but, well, that's beside the point. 
but we're not done yet. Below the small states, we can make another category of microstates with between 10,000 and 100,000 people living in them. These do not have to look small on a map. For instance, Greenland has less than 60,000 inhabitants, meaning it would be one of these if it wasn't actually part of Denmark. Europe has four countries in this category, which all do look tiny. Andorra, Monaco, Liechtenstein and San Marino. Monaco is the only one of these with access to the sea. San Marino is surrounded on all sides by Italy, and Andorra and Liechtenstein have two neighbors each. Liechtenstein is also one of the two countries in the world that is double landlocked, meaning that it doesn't border the sea itself, and neither do any of its neighboring countries. And that's quite an achievement, being that close to the Mediterranean Sea. Together with the five small countries I named earlier, these four microstates form the small states of Europe, a coalition pretty much only used for hosting games. The Faroe Islands would like to make that an even 10, but they aren't fully independent, instead being part of Denmark, so they can't join. What you may not be able to see very well here is how much these nine countries differ in surface area, their size on the map. The best way to give you an idea about that is probably to tell you that Iceland is easily bigger than the other eight combined, and the number two, Montenegro, is easily bigger than all the others minus Iceland combined. This stays true as you move down the list. Cyprus is bigger than the smallest 6, Luxembourg is bigger than the smallest 5. The only exception is Andorra, which has a larger surface area than Malta, but not larger than Malta, Liechtenstein, San Marino and Monaco combined. But as we move down the list, Malta is larger than Liechtenstein, San Marino and Monaco combined. And Liechtenstein on its turn is larger than San Marino plus Monaco. Monaco at the bottom of the heap is so small that despite its population of only about 35,000, it's still the most densely populated country in the world. And they still have room for their famous Grand Prix. Now, there are in fact two more candidates that might be allowed to join the small states of Europe if they wanted to. One of these is Vatican City, where the Pope lives. It's completely surrounded by the city of Rome and has less than 1,000 inhabitants, meaning that if Andorra and Monaco are microstates, this is a certified nanostate. The other one is the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, which is a different entity from the Malta we discussed earlier. Despite enjoying many of the same benefits other countries enjoy, the order does not actually have its own independent piece of ground somewhere. Just a few buildings that will probably get blown up in a Dan Brown novel any day now. Most of them located in Rome. The order has three official citizens alongside 13,000 members and about 100,000 other associates. So it's either about as big as Monaco, or as small as I made as Uppistan, depending on how you look at it. But let's get to the heart of the matter now. Why do these countries need their own Olympic Games? Well, a lot of people that say they like sports actually don't. They just really like to cheer for their own country. That works best when you have someone to cheer for. If your country has a small amount of citizens, the chances of one of them becoming really good at something are small too. And it gets even worse for team sports, where you don't just need one person to be really good, but a whole bunch of them. Now at the 2012 Summer Olympics, both Cyprus and Montenegro won a single silver medal. For both of them, it was their first Olympic medal ever. The rest of the small countries went home empty-handed. Andorra, Malta, Monaco and San Marino have never won a medal in the Olympic Games, ever. Leading the all-time Olympic cable for small countries is Liechtenstein with two gold, two silver and five bronze medals, all of which were won with alpine skiing between 1976 and 1988. So there you have it, when you're from Iceland, the real Olympic Games are really boring. In the games of the small states of Europe, however, your country stands a good chance. This also brings us to why Vatican City and the Knights of Malta don't compete. Neither of them have a lot of young people within their ranks with ambitions in sport. They're more about praying and healing and, if possible, being really old. They probably just gave up on chewing for their own, or they simply cheer for wherever they came from in the first place, as native-born citizens of these countries are rare, to say the least. The Vatican does have a football team, though, mostly comprised of members of the Swiss Guard. If you want to know what the Swiss Guard is doing in the Vatican, please Google it yourself, because I'm really straying, of course, here. So in the end, the games of the small states of Europe are just like the Olympics. 
except for people that like to cheer for a strict selection of about a hundred thousand people or so. It's a biannual event, meaning it takes place every two years, and just like in the Wii Olympics, the host country can make some changes to the list of sports. This year the games are in Luxembourg, who compared to some of the other countries have room to spare, as well as plenty of bicycle enthusiasts. Therefore they will be hosting a road cycling competition, where in other editions cycling competitors are often go fight to the track, or even not divided at all. The complete event this year will last 6 days and the participants will compete in athletics, gymnastics, cycling, mountain biking, judo, basketball, volleyball, beach volleyball, shooting, swimming, table tennis and normal tennis. I have no idea if the games can be followed anywhere, much less if one should want to. But at least now you know that the next time you hear a person from the Netherlands proudly complain they live in a small country, you can tell them on my behalf that the population is two orders of magnitude too large for that. Thank you for watching.